Welcome back to another video. My name is Tatiana and today we're gonna talk about my favorite games of 2023. These are not like, I think the game is better than all the games. In my mind, I usually don't pit games against each other like for their mechanics and things like that just because I play so many different genres of games. It just feels unfair to judge them based on that. So it's simply just the amount of fun. And 10 doesn't mean I didn't have fun playing it. I will explain my reasoning behind each number. Feel free also to share your favorite games of the year. You could do a top 10 or you could do a top three and don't like judge anyone for their top games. Everyone has different reasons why they love games. Don't get mad about people's favorite games. Share your favorite games in the comments. We're just loving games and actually enjoying them, okay? And being happy everyone is enjoying the games they enjoy. Let's jump into it. Number 10 on my list is Starfield. And the reason it is number 10, and honestly, even on my list, is because I loved, I absolutely loved the side missions in this game. Everything else I didn't like. I'm not gonna lie. The main story, like the point I got in the side missions, I was like, oh, I think I'm missing certain like things. I need to probably play the main story. And I asked my brother and he's like, yeah, you should probably play, play a bit of the main story. You're missing some stuff that would make these side quests easier. Cause all I was doing was side quests for 30 hours straight. And I'm not gonna lie. The main story absolutely sucked all the joy out of the game for me. It was so repetitive to do a certain task. I'm not gonna spoil it. I literally, just couldn't be bothered. I did it for a bit and I I was like, asked my brother, I'm like, how much longer of this game is there left? He's like, you got it quite a bit. And I was like, I literally can't do it. And I just went back to doing side quests because that's all I wanted to do. The side quests which are just so good in this game. They're so much more interesting and they feel more important to me than anything that happens in the main story. I've seen more of the main story as my sister tried to play through it, but she also is not digging the main story. Like it truly sucks the life out of it for me. And this is just my personal opinion. If you love Starfield, love Starfield. It's like, this is just how I felt playing the game. The side quests are so much fun that it made it onto my list. That's how much fun the side quests were for me. But a lot of other stuff just felt a bit redundant and a bit outdated. And so that's why it's not higher on this list. Number nine on my list is Hi-Fi Rush. This game for me kind of came out of like nowhere. Like it literally released and everyone was saying it was so amazing. So I decided to play it. And this game just felt so much like a game I would have played on the original Xbox. Like I would have went to my cousin's house. I would have been like a little kid and you would have had this game and I would have been playing it. It just felt so nostalgic for some reason to me and I just really loved it. And I don't even like rhythm games that much because I'm not that good at them. It's not because they're bad, it's because I'm bad at them. It's like, so I don't usually check them out as often as I would. I, there are some that I, I do check out, but I'm always so bad at them <laughs> that I get frustrated. So I was surprised um, that I enjoyed Hi-Fi Rush so much. I think they did a really good job of explaining like how to, you know, do things on beat and do the fighting on beat. It was just so satisfying when you did do some moves on beat. It was so much fun. Um, and I just enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed the humor a lot. It made me laugh. You know, it made me have a good time. So I definitely like that one because it gave me such a nostalgic feeling to like load up the Xbox and play that game. Um, and I think it even won an award. Like I'm so proud of that game. I'm really happy about it. And it, for me, it felt like a hidden gem. Like, I don't know, I didn't hear anything about it and it just like came up out of nowhere for me. And I was so excited about it when I did get to play it. So that's number nine on my list. Number eight is Mail Time. This game is super adorable and I actually played this game fully on this channel. I really enjoyed it. I thought the characters were so cute and well written and I really enjoyed the style of that game. Like the visual style was super cool. The music was very nice and I really, really enjoyed it. It was a very cozy kind of curled up and played it and just had a couple laughs and stuff. I mean, cozy curled up with you guys because we played, that's on this channel. The whole thing is on this channel. You can check out the playlist if you want, but I super, super enjoyed it and I played it almost all in one day. I did the recording that day because I just I just loved it and I was having so much fun with it. Next up at number seven is Shumi Come Home. This is the other really adorable mushroom game that came out. There was quite a few that were coming out this year, which I liked. I thought they were super adorable. I think even Mail Time and Shumi Come Home did some cross like promotions together, which was really cute. I think they both appeared in each other's like demos because I played both those demos and it was really cool to see each of the characters kind of show up in uh, in like the two demos. It was really cool to see that cross promotion. And honestly, Mail Time and Shumi Come Home are gonna be like in the same in the same spot but I decided they needed their separate spots and I really really enjoyed Shumi Come Home it was so cute I even had some tears I shed some little tears I was feeling emotional that day and I was playing it I played it on my steam deck on my tv I just curled up on the couch 
and just played through it almost all in one day. It was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I really liked the story and I really liked the puzzle aspect of running around and kind of remembering who needs different things. I just really enjoyed the environment. Again, the art style with this one was really cool um, and I really enjoyed it. I just, I had a good time. It was a good cozy time. Number six is Venba. This game is so emotional. I was literally in tears at 2 a.m. in my room. I was playing this game. It is so much fun. And honestly, I think I think a cookbook is coming. I don't remember. I know people have requested a cookbook because there are so many amazing and tasty looking recipes in this game. I, I was like trying to take notes. I was literally trying to take notes. I really enjoyed the puzzles for the cooking. It was super nice and very realistic feeling. Like I felt like I was really cooking these foods and all I wanna do is try more um, of those foods. I love trying foods from all different um, cultures. And so I was like, I haven't tried a lot of these. I need to be trying them. Some of them I have, but I was like, I need to try more. So I was really, really excited to jump into this game. Um, um, I also have grandparents who immigrated to Canada, actually. So it brought up a lot of um, things that I never really thought about my grandparents could have gone through. Unfortunately, I can't ask them now about those things. But um, things like, you know, with your kids growing up in a different place and diff being a bit different than you because they're growing up somewhere where maybe, for example, you don't know the language very well. They, I thought they handled that beautifully in the game. Um, and I never thought about those things and how maybe it would be hard to relate to your kids or your grandkids or things like that just because of even just that language barrier. Barrier. So it really got me thinking and got me much more interested in about my heritage and yeah I was just really good and it taught me some life lessons. It got me thinking so it was a really good game. I really, really enjoyed it. Number five is A Space for the Unbound. This one had me blubbering like a baby. It was a really good game though. I loved it. It was so interesting. The pixel style is very beautiful and I really enjoyed the story and how it unfolded as you were going through different levels and things. It go touches a lot of um, topics that are pretty intense and so, and honestly I deal with a lot of the things I talked about um, with mental health you know I've always been open about that that I do struggle with mental health and uh, various different things so it was really nice to kind of see it like unfold in the game and see how the character different characters were dealing with different things that even I could relate to so I related to a lot of the characters it was really well done I think it was very nice I really enjoyed it I played it almost like I think I just played it solely on the steam deck another situation where I curled up and just played it. Um, definitely Venba and A Space for the Unbound, very impactful and like um, got me thinking about, you know, different things or people I know or just, you know, got me thinking. And I think that's always good when a game can really touch you that way and um, influence you in that way and get you just thinking about things and maybe how to be like even a better person or like make changes and for the better of yourself and for others. So yeah. Number four is The Bookwalker Thief of Tales. This game came out of nowhere for me. I didn't know this game was coming out. My sister was playing it and she's like, have you played this really cool game where you go into books and you have to like get an artifact or something and you're a, a criminal? And I was like, that sounds amazing. So I started playing it, super amazing. I haven't finished it all the way because there was a glitch that was stopping me from playing it. But as far as I know, I think it's been patched out. So I am gonna return to it. It's so much fun what I did play of it. It's super fun. I really enjoyed the unique of the story like the concept is so unique and I love I love a unique thing I love a unique story unique game mechanic unique like way of telling a story and I really enjoyed the entire premise of this game and like the story and the world building was very interesting and I really really enjoyed it so definitely recommend that one definitely check that one out if you like that kind of stuff number three on my list is shadows of doubt which I know this is an early access game but this game is incredible okay this game is incredible I love this game I did play this game a lot last time I played it was October and this is my current crime board um, for a you know someone committing a lot of crime and it's honestly it's stressing me out like I really feel like one of those hard-boiled like detectives like they're in the street they drink and they're having a hard time because they can't solve the case that's me in the game right now anyway it's a great game shadows of doubt is so underrated I think this year it is so incredible and even where it's at and it's still being updated it will continue to be updated for its full release we will talk about it again at its full release because I love to do that I love to visit the games when they're fully finished and the in the image that the dev wants I, I love that and I love shadows of doubt it is so good again the concept and premise is just the type of detective game that I've always wanted and I think they execute it so well inside of this game so and they're adding so many cool things you can do improving that feeling of being the detective and getting all the all the clues and everything so good love it chef's kiss number two my my time at Sandrock has surprised me so much. 
Like, I almost was gonna make a whole video talking about how surprising this game was for me, because on the outside, from someone who didn't play Portia and is just looking at Sandrock, I truly thought it was just gonna be like, a cutesy, like, woo, cutesy little, like, we're fixing up the town, you know, and th that game's not bad. I love games like that. It's true. It's that, but it's so much more. Like, it is so much more. There are so many characters. There are so many twists and turns in this story. Like, this story on average takes people 80 hours to play, which I didn't know before I got it. I, I got to 70 something, two hours, and I was like, wait, like, how have I not finished the story? Like, I was kind of like, what is happening? And then I got to this point now, it's 78 hours, where there's so much more story. There's so much more story. There's just so much that happens that I just don't expect to happen. There's like, you you do combat in this game. There's the typical, like, you know, romantic type of, true like, th like, like meeting, like relationships, that's what I'm saying, relationship building. You can have children, you're building up the town, yes, but there's a lot of, you know, different things that happen with like the apocalypse that happened because this takes place after an apocalypse. I could rant for hours. Just is so incredible to me that there is just so much packed into this game and it doesn't feel overwhelming one or the other. I'm telling you, there's just so much in this game that I didn't expect and it's just such a fun experience for me. I've played it, you know, at my computer at the, with the Steam Deck going around. Like this game comes with me everywhere. I'm literally in love with this game. Like I love it. So number one, my favorite game of the year, the game that was the most impactful for me. It had me crying my eyes out. It had me laughing. It had me geeking out so much. Like I was so geeked out. The story went places I didn't even think it was gonna go. My number one game for 2023 is Spider-Man 2. It, it is just because of that nostalgia factor. Like I have loved superheroes since I was a kid. And it's not like I love superheroes, like superheroes because of things that I was going through as a kid meant you keep pushing and do what's right. You keep pushing and you do what's right and you get through the thing that's hard and you don't forget people along the way. That is like what superheroes meant to me. That might seem so deep for a kid, but I'm not even kidding. Like that's what they meant to me. It wasn't like surface level. I love superheroes. I love that they punched the bad guys. I loved that they were fought for justice. I love that they fought for what was right. And like, that's what I kind of took those things and brought it into my life. So. I felt like to not pick Spider-Man just felt like I had to pick it because it's just, it means so much to me, like that whole thing. And then also seeing Spider-Man done so well from Insomniac, from the first Spider-Man, like I was in line outside of GameStop for that. Like years ago, I was outside of GameStop for that at midnight waiting for my copy. I went home and played it through the night. Like Miles Morales came out and it was so exciting to see Spider-Man done in a different way that we've never seen before, adding different abilities. And I love Miles' story. I love the way that they've handled it, you know? And then Spider-Man 2, bringing the best of both worlds together and seeing like a spider team forming and they fight Venom and all the twists and turns and surprises and like fandom stuff that they bring through for with Venom. Like my siblings and I, we all have played this game and it hit my expectations. I'm grinning ear to ear, like playing it like a little goofy kid. And so because of that, the grinning ear to ear, the goofy kid feeling it gave me, that's my number one game of the year. Those are my top 10 games. These are games that have impacted me personally. They're games that had me grinning ear to ear, like a giggling little kid. They're the games that won't quit. Like they just have so much in them that I'm just playing them and everything I play, I'm enjoying and I'm motivated to continue to play them. They're the games that I've shared with you because I love them so much. I've played them, whether it's on this channel or my ASMR channel, I've done gameplays, I've talked about them. Just so many experiences and things that I enjoyed so much that really, when I think of 2023 in gaming, I'm gonna think of those games. And I know there are so many games that I wanted to play that got awards this year that were, you know, people are talking about still and saying they're incredible, they're getting DLCs and updates. I'm gonna have to explore those in 2024. Usually the first half of 2024 is when I really dive into those games that kind of got missed along the way. And I'm excited to jump into those. I love video games and I just love to share games and I'm glad I get to do that on this channel. So thank you all so very much for supporting this channel in 2023 and letting me talk about video games, something I love so very much. Have a great rest of your morning afternoon night your week your month your rest of 2023 whenever you see this video i hope that you have a great time and thank you so much i appreciate you remember to stay safe hug your loved ones and i'll see you all next year